Hey there everyone, welcome back to the REST API in-depth series. In this video, we're going to go over a bunch of exercises together to get more practice with what we went over in the last video, which was just uh, an introduction to how we actually created our first REST API in Dino. So in this, we're going to look at things how like uh, respond with uh, a JSON response, respond with an HTML response, uh, and a bit of the headers, stuff like that. And we're going to see how this uh, real REST API actually is starting slowly to come to shape as we're actually going to start eventually in the next video, uh, start going into a bit more of the concepts regarding REST specifically. So let's start with the exercises. Okay, so to start, I have uh, all these exercises. As with all the previous uh, series I've done, uh, these are going to be in the GitHub repo for the course in the description below. Uh, so you can grab it from there and clone it down if that's easier for you, or you can just follow along with the video. And what I'll do is I'll go through each of these and I'll kind of give you a chance to pause the video after I explain what's going to happen in the exercise, give you a chance to try it yourself and you can unpause the video and come back and we can go through a potential solution together. Um, so either way, whichever is easier for you. So to start, uh, I have a warm up exercise. We're going to go through three uh, exercises after this uh, once we have the uh, fingers warmed up. So uh, we want to create a, a Dino workspace if you're using VS Code and create a server.ts file. Uh, TS being for TypeScript. Uh, so if you forget how to do that, I'll show you how to do that uh, right after I give you a chance to try it yourself. And I want you to start a new Dino server with the Dino serve command. Use port 9000 for this just to get practice changing ports. Uh, but I want you to have this server just always res uh, respond with a string that just says hello. Regardless of the request, it's just always going to say hello. And you can test it uh, both uh, in your browser and in Insomnia after you actually start your server using the Dino run command. So give that a shot and then we will go through it together. All right, so to start, uh, what I'll do is I will just create a, uh, I guess I'll do a new folder. I'll just call this warm up uh, and I'll open up my terminal here and I'll, I'll, I'll do a control shift P. I'll do Dino, initialize workspace, uh, enable linting, yes, uh, unstable APIs, no. Uh, so that was a command shift P and I, um, I typed a Dino to get that, right? So Dino, just like that. And we saw that that initializes this uh, settings file right here in our VS code folder. I think this works for nested folders. So um, what I'll do is I'll just open this nested folder up and let's test that out. So in this warm up, uh, I'll create a, a server, server dot server.ts file. <clears throat> and uh, actually I'll close my terminal for now and we'll actually just get started with uh, this exercise. So just to remember, we wanna create a server on port 8000 respond to every single request with um, a hello message. So I'm gonna say uh, dino.serve and in, in serve, uh, we know that there's a few different um, overrides we have for this serve method. We're gonna usually use uh, this second one unless you wanna use a default. Uh, so if you have VS Code, you get these nice helpful hints. Um, I'm going to give it an object here. I'll give it a port. This port is gonna be uh, 9,000. And then uh, I'm gonna give it a handler here. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna create a function here. I'll, instead, I'll make this an async function because that's uh, usually what we're gonna end up doing for most of these because we wanna be able to use await at some points. We might not in this specific exercise. Uh, and I'm gonna call this handler. And this function is going to get a request object. And I'm gonna type that using TypeScript like this with a colon, and then I'm gonna type it with a request. And we're gonna respond with a response object. Um, so you can see right here, this is complaining because we're not responding with a uh, response object or a promise with a response object in it, which is what it expects to be returned. So in this case, we actually just are not even gonna use the request object. We're always just gonna return a new response object. And that response is always just gonna have a body which says hello, just like that. Now you notice that once I save that, uh, the underlying, the, the, the linting, which is what was underlying this in red, is now gone, which tells us that this is technically correct um, because we're matching what Dino serve expects. The only thing that's complaining about is async. We're not really using await, so it's just warning us about that. Also warning is that we're not really using request object here, uh, but that's totally fine. It'll still run, that's just a warning. I'll open up my terminal here. You can see that I uh, am in the wrong um, folder. So I created this warm up folder, but I'm one folder up in the code folder. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll run um, Dino run. And remember that we need the uh, permissions for Dino to actually allow it to access the internet and our ports on our computer. So I have to run dash dash allow dash net. If you forget to do this, it's gonna ask you one time if you wanna do uh, like a Y or an N to allow it or disallow it. You know, but I, I want you to get a hang of actually using these permissions the way that they're expected to be used, which is kind of like this. Um, and I'm gonna tell it 
uh, I want to run this. Uh, I'm not going to use watch mode for this one. Uh, so I'm just going to say, oops, do you know run? Uh, and I want to go to warm up slash uh, server dot ts. So I'm going to tell it to run the file in the warm up, in my case, folder and server dot ts, and I'll have more folders later. So if I run this, um, what's going to happen is it's going to say it's listening on this port. Uh, so I can actually grab that URL right there. I can copy it using control or command C. I can switch over to both Chrome and um, to Insomnia to get this working. So I'll try Chrome first. I'll open up a new window here. I'll paste that in. And uh, if I zoom in a lot here, we can see that indeed we are getting our hello, which is quite nice. And if I open up my uh, uh, console and do the inspect and I go over to the network tab and I reload the page, what I'll see is I'm making a connection to localhost here and the response is the text hello. And we can actually look at some of the headers that are going back and forth here. In this case, just plain text. If you wanna try that in Insomnia, I'm going to go to Insomnia. Uh, this is the default kind of view. Uh, I'm just going to make a collection for this. So in the top right, if you're on the home page of Insomnia, you can get that by pressing this home button. I'm going to do a new request collection, and I'll call this uh, simple uh, web server exercises. Uh, and then now I've created that collection. So if I go back, you can see that this is a new collection here. I'll, I'll open that one up, and I'll click this plus button right here. I'll say a new HTTP request. Uh, and I'll uh, <clears throat> click on this uh, little button once it's being created to rename this, and I'll rename this to uh, warm up. I'll just say warm up, and I'll just leave it at that. And, and then I can paste in my URL up here. I can press enter, uh, or I can click the send button, and we can see that down here we indeed get our hello back. We can also look at the uh, headers that come back right here, which is a plain text as well as the length of the content. Um, and the date and time, which is quite nice. So uh, that is actually working. That's the warm up exercise right there, both in Insomnia and in Chrome, as well as how it actually works in our actual server file for Dino. So that's a very simple, a uh, hello world kind of server. So I'm gonna stop that server and uh, I will open up exercise one so we can take a look at what that one's about. All right. So for this one, uh, same kind of deal. I'd like you to create a uh, server.ts file and start it on port 9000 for a new uh, server, web server. And I want you to request, uh, respond to each request with both the request method as well as the request URL as a string. So this is being a bit more dynamic. So what do I mean by that? For example, imagine to make a get request. We saw this in uh, the, the, the headers and the, the types of requests that we can make. If I make a get request to this URL, uh, it should respond with this string that looks kind of like this. Okay? If I make a post request to this URL, it should respond with this string that looks like this. Okay? And we can test post uh, in Insomnia quite easily. We can test get both in our browser and in Insomnia as well. And then I want you to start that server, uh, test it again, both in Insomnia and in the browser. And just a little hint here for you before you start, or a little bonus for you to try. Uh, see if you can actually log out the method and the path name for each request as they come through. So for example, like as a request comes through in our terminal here in VS Code in this case, I'd like to be able to see the something like this, like get slash hello uh, or, or put slash meow. And that's just this last part of the path. Um, see if you can get that working uh, as a bonus if you like. So give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. All right, so I'll create a new folder. Uh, I'll just call this ex1. Uh, and in here, I'm gonna create a uh, server.ts file. And I'll go through this one a little bit faster since we've seen this before, dino.serve command. And uh, I want to give this port 9000 here as an object. And then the second option is my handler in this case. I'll probably eventually rename this to something different. So I'll create that handler, async function handler. And this is going to take a request object. We might actually use it in this case. And I'm going to type that with request, which is the web standard uh, for the actual request object from the fetch API, which we saw in the previous video. Um, and now, uh, if we look at our exercise, uh, we want to actually respond with the method as well as the URL. So where would those be? Where would those be? Those are going to be in this request object. So let's take a look. I'm going to say const method. I'm going to say is equal to request. So since this is typed, this is very helpful. And if I do a dot, you can see that there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. It turns out, look at this right here. We have method. That is one of the uh, bits of data that we have from our request object from our client. So that's quite nice. Uh, let's take a look at URL. Let's see if it's in there. I'll say const URL is equal to request dot. And let's see if we have a URL in here. And indeed we do right there at the bottom. That is a URL from our request. And if you're confused about how this works, if you go to uh, 
uh, fetch API request object or uh, MDN request object, anything like that should work. Uh, if you look at this uh, article right here, eventually land on this one, the request web APIs, MDN web docs, you'll get something that looks like this. Um, and I highly recommend you get comfortable with the MDN documentation. If you scroll down, you can see all the different instance properties. In this case, we're getting the method, contains request method, get, put, post, etc. And we're getting the, um, the URL, contains the URL of the request. There's a whole bunch of other really cool stuff in here that we'll use in future videos as well. So um, that works quite nicely. Um, we're going to get those. And now we want to send that back to the client as a response. Uh, but, and we want to kind of format it. Uh, like this, like a string that looks like this. So let's see if we can get that working. So I'm going to say, uh, I'll do this. I'll say const uh, response string is equal to, and I'll, and I'll use a template string here. So I'm going to put in here the method and I'll do a space. And then in here, I'll put the URL. So this is going to be the method method. And in here, this is going to be the URL. I could have done this in line, but I'll just show you how you can kind of separate it out if you want to have a longer formatting. And then I want to return with a new response, and I'm just going to give it that response string. Okay, so a response can take a string and I'll put it in the body of the response, and we can return with that. And uh, with that, now you can see the only thing that we uh, Dean was complaining to us about in the linter is async because we're not using await anywhere. So technically, we could get away with a non-async function here, uh, but we'll leave it at that just so that we get practice uh, doing that and not forget in the future. So I'll save that file. I'll open my terminal again, and I'm going to run this. So I'm going to do Dino. Uh, run dash dash allow dash net because we have networking in this case and I'm going to go into the ex1 folder and I'm going to do server.ts just like that and if I run that um, it's going to tell me that I have a new release of Dino I can use uh, which is very helpful uh, I won't update that right now uh, but it's going to say listening on uh, Dino uh, port 9000 so I'm going to copy that again I'll go back to Chrome I'll open up this URL, uh, this previous URL that I had, which is localhost 9000 already. I'll refresh that. Um, and it looks like I get that answer, which is pretty cool. I get get to localhost 9000. What if in here I do like slash hello? Look at that. I actually get that response back. What if I say hello slash meow? Uh, I get that entire uh, string back, which is quite nice. And it's a get request. Um, let's try this in Insomnia because we can do some other cool things. So if I go to Insomnia here, um, I'll create a, a new request. I'll click the plus in the same collection I was in before, a new HTTP request. And I'll just rename this. Uh, I will say uh, ex1. And I'll click on that one. And I'll post uh, this URL in. I'll click send. And we get back the same thing that we saw in Chrome. Uh, and if I say like meow, for example, I will get back uh, that URL. But check this out. Now, if I change the method by clicking get up here, I can try post request, for example. And if I click that, uh, look at that. I get back post. If I change it to a delete, uh, I can do a send. And I get back a delete with that same URL. And I can make this URL quite complicated, like one, two, three. And I get back the entire thing, which is quite nice. So that actually works pretty nicely. Um, so let's take a quick look, though, at the, the bonus for this, because I'm sure that you're wondering about that as well. We said, how can you log the method and just the path name? So like out here, as the requests are coming in, how can we kind of make a log to see how things work? Because a lot of server uh, frameworks actually do this for us. So um, just do note, though, that I, I mentioned that I want to log out just a path name, not the actual full URL, just so we can clean it up uh, a little bit and it looks a bit nicer. So I'll stop my server here for a second. Um, and I, I want to effectively log that last part of that URL. So one way we can do this is by, um, let me let me just create a URL object. So I'll say const URL object. Uh, normally I would just do this as URL, but since I already have that declared, I'll create a separate variable here. I'll say new URL, and this is going to be the request.url. I could have also just used this URL. And now this URL object is going to have many things inside of it, including this path name, which is all very nice coming typed from Dino from this web standard URL API. So if I say const path name is equal to this, I can grab that out of this uh, object after I've turned it into the URL uh, using the constructor. So this URL is actually doing all the complicated like parsing of this URL into all its different parts for me. And I'm only interested in the path name. So what I can also do now is I can do a console.log here and I can uh, template out. Uh, let's do it inline in this case. I'll do a dollar sign inline and I'll do this one here, a dollar sign inline. 
Um, and this can be the method, which we have from before. Uh, and instead of the full URL, what I can put here is simply the path name. And if I save this and I rerun my server here, uh, if I come to Insomnia and I make a few requests, I'll do a delete request, and then I'll do a, a get request, and then uh, maybe I'll change this to a hello, and then I'll do a post request, and I'll send that off. Uh, what we'll see if I switch back is, look at that, we actually get uh, those logged out, which is quite nice. And I'm sure you've probably used some kind of server uh, before, if you've ever done um, like a dev server before or worked with um, like any kind of backend. If you haven't, you'll probably see this at some point where that will be uh, quite helpful for you to actually know that your server is being hit by your uh, front end in this case, or uh, an API, a tool like Insomnia. So this is very useful for us to see the different ty types of requests that are coming in at a very high level. So we actually at least know that our server is doing something and that we're getting a request. Um, so that's pretty useful. I, I, I hope you liked that one. So I'll, set, I'll stop that server and uh, we'll take a look at exercise two. Okay, so for this one, um, what I'd like you to do is the uh, same kind of deal again. Uh, create a, If you haven't created DNO workspace, go ahead and create that, create a server file. Start a server on port uh, 9000 using Dino Serve. And now what I want you to do is very similar to the previous one uh, where we kind of responded with the URL and the method, but now I want you to respond with JSON specifically, okay? Um, now, the structure of this JSON is gonna look like this. Okay, so uh, for example, if the URL uh, is that one, we'll get back that uh, with a URL key, and if the method is get, we get back that with the method key. And this would change depending on both the URL and the method changing as well, just like we saw previously. So start this and test it uh, in Insomnia and in the browser. Uh, in Insomnia, you wanna be careful how you format this so that it actually shows up correctly. Remember that uh, by default, headers are sending, uh, in, in Dino and many other frameworks, if you don't specifically specify what you're sending back, a lot of times it can be sent back as plain text. So remember the header type we need uh, to, to change specifically for this response to make it so that uh, the application receiving the response knows that it's of type JSON. So that's your hint for you. Give that a shot and then we'll go through it together. All right, so I'll create a new folder here. I'll just call this ex2. Uh, and in there, I will do a new file. I'll do server.ts. Um, and I'll do the same thing here. I'll do dino.serve and I'll do it on port uh, 9000. I'm just using 9000 just so you can get practice doing different non default ports that comes with dino serve, uh, just so you uh, can see how to do that if you want to change it, it to be your own port or if you have to use a specific port for some infrastructure for example um, the default I think is 8000 or, or 8080 I don't remember it should say here there it is 8000 um, so technically we don't actually need that in there if we don't care to change it um, now I'll do an async function I'll call this handler which is what I just posted in there and uh, this is going to get our request and this is our request object and now we need to figure out how to make a JSON object. So technically from before, what we what we knew is we can say const URL is equal to request.url. I don't need the specific path name or part. So in this case, I can just grab the string directly out of request.url. If I want to parse out the uh, path name or the uh, other things in there or the body, I would I'd be able to use different uh, things off of this uh, or the URL constructor, for example. But I just want the URL uh, kind of flat out. So that's that's fine for that one. And I'll say const method is equal to request.method. And this should be uh, the get or the post or the delete and things like that. Now, what we did previously was we uh, sent back uh, an, uh, a string, right? We sent back a string uh, to the response object. Now, what we want to do in this case is send back an object. So let's, let's try this. Let's see if I can make const JSON is equal to an object. And I'm going to put the URL and the method in there. Okay. I'm using the uh, shorthand here. So this is technically the same thing as URL is going to be uh, URL and method is going to be method. Uh, so the, the key name and the actual value are the same, but I'm just using this shorthand because it looks quite nice and it's easier, a bit easier to read. Now, um, let's see if we can respond with this. So I'll say, uh, return new response and I'm going to return with JSON. Okay. So I'm getting an error here from Dino and let, let's hover over this. And it's going to say argument of type URL string uh, method string is not assignable to uh, body init null undefined. Um, okay. So uh, that is a little bit confusing. So um, let's, let's take a look at, at what this might be. So if I go to Chrome and I, I go to Google and I'll say 
um, uh, fetch API response object. Can't spell, but uh, it can fix it for me. There we go. Uh, response uh, web API. So this is the complementary uh, API to the request API. Uh, if I go to that, we can see that uh, this is the interface for the fetch request, which you saw in the previous video. It creates a new response object. So let me take a look at this constructor. If I open this up, uh, it looks like response constructor creates a new response object, and we can use it in these particular ways. We can call it blank, we can call it with a body, we can call the body and options. So what is body? Let's take a look at this. An object defining a body for the response, this can be null, which is a default value, or one of the following things. Um, in this case, it's saying we can use a blob, which we haven't seen really too much of before, a buffer, type array, data view, uh, all these different things, and at the very end, we have a string or a string literal. So what is not in here, as you can probably see, is an object or JSON or things like that. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. Um, so we probably in this case need to figure out how to turn it into one of these things. I'm gonna turn it into a string because that's the easiest way to kind of go about this. And uh, we'll leave some of these maybe for some future exercises where we do send back even just binary data. But for JSON, most of the time, it should be string of, string of, stringifiable, uh, turned into a string, and I'll, and I'll show you how we're gonna do that right now. So uh, let's have this JSON object, that's totally fine. And, and then what I'll say is const JSON string is equal to json.stringify of this JSON. Now, JSON stringify is going to take uh, a JSON object or, or JavaScript object. Um, and as long as that object is able to be turned into a string, for example, it has no functions in it or cyclical references and things that make it impossible to turn it into a string, uh, it, it will turn it into a JSON string for us, which is quite nice. So in, in this case, we're gonna get back a string, uh, which is the JSON uh, version of this, but just as an actual string. So now what I can do is in here, I can send it back as JSON string. And what I'll do also is I'll just console.log out that JSON string, uh, just so that on the back end, we can actually take a look at what that actually looks like. Okay, so this seems to actually fix our error. We're still getting the async thing because we're not using await, but that's fine. Let, let's see what, what happens if we do this. So I'm gonna run uh, dino run dash dash allow dash net. And in this case, I'm gonna do ex2 uh, slash and then server.ts just like that. And if I run that, we get back that port again. I'll go to Chrome, I'll go to my uh, my URL here. I'll do a refresh and it looks like it kind of works. Okay, so that's pretty cool. We get back URL uh, and then we get back this uh, URL. Notice the, the double quotes, because this is JSON. We get back method and we get back get. So that actually works quite nicely. Um, if I click on this meow here and I click on preview, you can see that we actually do get this parse size J JSON because Chrome is smart enough to realize that this is a JSON object. Let's see what happens with this insomnia. If I go there, I'll create another HTTP request here. I'll just rename this one uh, just so that we can keep track of things. I'll see ex2 and I'll rename that. Uh, and in here, I'll do, um, I'll, I'll copy this one right here, localhost uh, 9000, and I'll just give it an arbitrary URL with a get request in this case. And I'll do a send. Um, and you can see that we, uh, we get back URL uh, and method um, as if it is a, a JSON object. So that, that's, that's pretty interesting. Um, now, let's look at the headers for a second. And uh, this is technically not correct. Um, it it's actually is parsing this JSON for us. Um, I'm actually not sure the cases where this always works and always doesn't work. So I'll probably have to look that up. But if we look at these headers, um, Insomnia right now is kind of working like Chrome. It's a little bit, uh, it's trying to be smart and realize, hey, this is probably JSON. We should probably display it like this. So I can actually look at it and I can search it easily and I can kind of collapse it and look at uh, look at nested JSON and things like that. But it's being sent back as text slash plain, which is not correct. So I'm gonna go to Google real quick. I'm gonna search uh, HTTP headers for uh, JSON. Okay. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of different uh, things that we can uh, look at. I'll just open, for example, a, a, the Stack Overflow right here. Uh, if I scroll down here, we will see, if I zoom in a little bit here for us all, uh, we'll see content type header is just use info for your application. Uh, if you wanna parse the JSON, you need to do that on your own. Um, this this person is giving an example of application slash JSON. So that looks to be maybe the MIME type for this header. So instead of, uh, if I'll go back a step, and I'll say HTTP headers content type, for JSON, 
uh, I do get back uh, as well a similar looking uh, answer from a different website in this case, application slash JSON as a content type. Do we have to do it all the time? No, it, it's really up to the application to be smart enough to figure it out, but it really helps the application along and it's a correct way to do things if we set the header correctly for this. So there are a few ways to do this. Um, for this one, uh, what I'll do, and we can actually see here that we do have that object being logged out uh, or the stringified version of the object being logged out, which is nice, which is exactly what we expected to see. So that's good. Um, I'm going to uh, stop the server for a second and I'm going to uh, send back some uh, headers in this case. So uh, if I do a comma here and then I do an object uh, after, after sending back this JSON string, uh, I can put a headers key in here. Now you can make a new headers object and I would suggest you do that. I'll show you an alternative, which I'm not going to be doing very often because I think the correct way to make the, the headers object, uh, which we'll probably do for the, uh, for the next one. Uh, but I'll just do it this way so we can see some examples uh, that are different. And in here, I want to say uh, content, the, 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 the uh, uh, capitalization of this doesn't actually matter. So, uh, um, but if you want to look nice as a human, um, in this case, this is what we would do. Uh, application slash JSON. Uh, if this was lowercase content type, that'd be fine too. So we want to send back this content type header with this response so that any application who, who's not, you know, uh, really trying really hard to figure out what type of uh, object this is that we're sending back can at least look at this header and be like, oh, this is JSON. I'm going to show you a nice viewer for this um, uh, just so that it uh, is a bit more explicit as to what the return type is here. So I'm going to run that Dino run command again here. And it's going to start the server up. If I did Dino watch, this would start automatically. And if I go back uh, to Insomnia here, let me send this request to get request. And now we'll see that the type here is application slash JSON, which is the correct typing. And it still is being uh, nicely parsed for the JSON viewer. And if I go back to Chrome, uh, previously we would have seen that uh, this uh, response is kind of in plain text, uh, text plain for the content type here. If I reload the page now, what we'll see is if I click on that, the type has been changed to application JSON, and um, we do still get the nice JSON viewer, but it was smart enough in both ways. Um, so uh, long story short, I think it's very important to make sure you do the header type correctly. And I would rather use a header API than actually uh, create it manually like this with an object, but this is a nice alternative. And we at least want to make sure that we are uh, hinting the application or the client as to the type of data that we're sending back, because in this case, it really is a special formatted type of data, which is JSON. Okay, hopefully that one makes sense. Let's take a look at the final exercise for this video together. I'll stop that server. I'll switch over to exercise three and I'll just close this for a second. So for this one, uh, what I would like you to do is start a uh, Dino workspace again, uh, create a server TS file and start a Dino server on port 9000. Now, now the, the thing that we're gonna try to do for this one is uh, return and uh, with HTML file. Okay, so we want to actually uh, create an HTML file. Uh, you can put whatever you want in there. I'm just going to put a simple H1 in there. You can put a body and head if you like. Uh, and we're going to uh, put this as our response to the request uh, to our server. Okay, and this is just going to be the response for every single um, every single request, just like before. So every single uh, request, regardless of the URL, is always going to respond with this HTML file that we need to end up creating. And you can put that HTML file in the same folder as your server file, just so you can open it a bit more easily. So uh, once you have that, try an Insomnia and in your browser. In the browser, you should see the format of version of HTML. Insomnia has a little preview pane to show you a bit of how that actually works. Um, and it'll uh, it'll show you the, the, the browser view as well. Uh, so you want to uh, have a couple of hints here just so it's a bit easier on you. Again, remember the header type for this, okay? There's a specific header type, not JSON in this case, it's something else. Try to think of what that might be. And uh, look up in the Adino documentation for how to read a file and uh, any permissions you might need to add to the Adino run command in order to make it so that uh, Adino can actually read uh, from the file system when we're actually starting Adino up, just like we had to allow the net permissions. So give that a shot and then we will go through it together. Okay, so I'm gonna create a folder here. I'll do uh, ex3. And in ex3, I'm going to create a server.ts file. I'll do this to set up really quick. I'll do dino.serve. Uh, and in here, I'll do a port and I'll do 9000. Uh, and I'll give it a handler. And in this case, I'll do an async handler function. Uh, async function handler. <laughs> uh, and there we go. And in this case, it's going to take a request of type request. All right. Now, 
I'm gonna also create a, a, a file for the that I want to respond. That's an HTML file. So in my ex3 folder, I'll create a let's just say hello.html file. And in here, I'll do a HTML opening closing brackets. Uh, I'll do a head. In the head, I'll do a title, uh, and I'll just say hello. Uh, and then I'll do a body as well. And in the body, I'll do an h1. Uh, I'll say hello, nice to meet you. There we go. All right, so that's our HTML file, and I'll save that. So we should, in our uh, browser, be able to see a kind of a, a header, a heading tag with this text inside of it. If you haven't done much HTML before, um, don't worry too much about it. Hopefully, this kind of is, is the most minimal, almost. You can kind of even get rid of the head here if you if you don't want it, and you could just have the body. Um, this is a hopefully uh, you can see this is just a. a a heading tag that has some text in it and we can actually display that in our browser. Um, so our goal is to read this file and to send it back as a response for every single request to our server. So how are we gonna do that? Um, well, let, let's think about this. We want to uh, open the file and we want to send the file as a response. And we have to also remember somewhere in here, uh, the header type question mark. Um, so let's let's do the file first. So I'm going to say const file is equal to dino.open. And, and open is uh, going to allow us to open a file. And if you uh, have it at this, um, when you first create it, you should be able to see some documentation directly in this pop-up, at least if you're using VS Code. Uh, or we could look up on uh, the Dino documentation as to how to open a file, and we would actually probably get the same examples. Um, so in this case, we can just give it a file name and optionally some permissions. Um, and then by default, there should be some permissions. Um, I think read true is by default. I, I don't know if write is true, we'll have to see. Um, but we also need to uh, add the allow read permission when we actually start up Dino as well. So um, we, we, we'll create our file. We have to use a wait in here. So we're actually finally gonna use that. Um, and then um, we, we can do the work with the file and we should actually close the file as well. So I'm gonna say dino.open. I'm gonna give it a string. I'm gonna say dot slash for the current folder, hello.html. And I'm gonna do an await on this. So I can grab that in this file. And this is going to be a Dino FS file. Um, and we're gonna have that available to us. And then what I need to do is figure out how I can get this content uh, over to the uh, client. Uh, we do also technically need to close the file uh, because if anyone else wants to use this file, uh, we should uh, allow them to have that or release the resource handle for this file. So anyone else trying to open it won't get uh, a denial for that because only one program should be able to open a file at a time. So so this is the uh, correct and nice thing to do instead of having it like timeout or something, for example, uh, we should always make sure to clean up after ourselves and close the file. This is how you do it with a Dino file. Um, now let's see if we can skip this header type for a second and, and kind of just get this working. Um, and maybe we'll run into some issues. We'll say return new response. And in this case, let's see if I can just send a file. Hmm. Okay, so that's not gonna work. Um, so it's saying FS file is not assignable to type body. So we saw this before with our JSON. This is uh, Dino telling us, hey, the response uh, doesn't accept this FS file type, which is what we get back when we call Dino.open. We get back a, a promise of type Dino FS file, and we're awaiting that promise, and we'll get back Dino FS file, which is a Dino backend type. Um, so we need to figure out how to turn that into something that response can take. And if we go back to Chrome, we look at response, uh, response can take this readable stream. Um, and this is a, a, a fancy way of sending data back in chunks. And Dino supports this. Uh, if we if we look at Dino uh, send file uh, HTTP or something like that, uh, we could see a file server manual, for example. Maybe that's one example of something we can look at. If I open this up, it says use dino.open to read a file content in chunks, transform a Dino file into a readable stream, uh, and then we can use HTTP server to send back that file. So that's pretty cool. Sounds like kind of what we want to do. Uh, this is using dino.listen, not dino.serve. Uh, maybe is there another example down here somewhere? Um, no, there's not. But let's kind of look and see if we can learn some concepts from this one. Okay, so we have like await dino open uh, read true. We should probably add that in ours. Uh, and then we can send not found if it's not found. So that's that's pretty good. I, I like that. So in this case, we're not doing that, but that's something to, to try in this case, a try catch block um, and send a different response depending on if we find the file or not. And then here's the part that I was looking for, build a readable stream so the file doesn't have to be fully loaded into memory when we send it, 
readable stream is file.readable, then we can pump that into our response object and send that back. So um, if I come back to VS Code here, I'm going to say um, const uh, readable stream is equal to file.readable, and, and I will get back a, uh, a, where is it? A readable stream of type uint8 array. So that's interesting. So um, if we go back to our uh, response here, we can see that that is a readable stream and we can actually send that back, which is quite nice. So now if I try to send back this readable stream, this, this file that's been chunked up by Dino automatically for us so that we can actually send it back uh, as, as a stream, uh, Dino is gonna handle all that complexity for us behind the scenes and now our error is gone because we can send back that type. So um, I'll ignore the header for a second. I'll just save this. Um, and I'll show you how we could do this with watch mode as well. So that if I uh, edit this file, I don't have to keep restarting the server. I'll say Dino run dash dash watch dash dash allow dash net because we have networking in this case and dash dash uh, in this case uh, is going to be allow dash read read access to the files uh, on our file system. Uh, notice that this is all um, with no spacing except in between each of these files. So there's a space here, there's a space here, and then there's gonna be a space here at the end. And the file I wanna run is going to be in ex3 slash server.ts. So dash dash watch, dash dash allow net, dash dash allow read. And we have a watcher process started. So if I change this file and I save it, it's gonna restart automatically uh, and it's listening on port 9000. So moment of truth, let's go back to this uh, in our browser and I'll refresh the page and uh, we can we get uh, an internal server error 500 uh, so that's interesting and get request 500 error 500 means uh, the server ran into an issue uh, and uh, the content length in this case is 21 if we preview it there's nothing in there we just get back the text internal server error so uh, let's Let's take a look at what might be wrong here. Uh, if no such file or directory uh, opening dot slash hello dot HTML. Um, and in this case, it's looking uh, for that fi uh, file over here. Um, I think uh, the reason is that uh, how I'm starting this file, it uh, depends on where I'm actually starting Dino from. So this is quite nice to actually see as an error. It's a bit scary to see these and, and not really sure what's happening here. So in this case, the error really is right here, which is it couldn't find the file hello.html. I have an have a, uh, inkling as to why that is, and I think it's because I'm starting it like this. So I'm gonna clear that out, and I'm gonna change into my ex3 folder here. And now I'm in this folder, and now I'm gonna run that command again, uh, which is dino, uh, dino run uh, dash dash watch dash dash allow dash net dash dash read, uh, eventually, uh, or allow read, sorry, dash dash allow dash read. Um, and then now I can directly run server.ts without the uh, ex3 because I'm in that folder already. And if I run that, um, now I'm on uh, that port in that server. Let's see if this works again. If I refresh the page, um, we get back this page can't be reached, which is a slightly different error. Uh, it failed. Uh, let's see why that failed. We, we have no response headers at all. In this case, it looks like it's because we have a bad resource ID, resource ID at this bad resource rest is kind of cut off here. Let's try to figure out why this is. It's also fun to kind of debug this together. That's probably why this is the last exercise. Um, okay, I think I actually see it. So uh, you probably caught this mistake if, if you're watching this and you've done this before, uh, but let's take a look at why this might be. So, so the error we're getting is error bad resource, uh, bad resource ID, and, and to me, kind of working with this stuff before, I know that that usually means that we're trying to uh, deal with some kind of resource and it's thinking that it's not really there or something happened with it that that it, it's unexpected. So um, let me close this terminal uh, really quick for a second. Let's look at this code. So we're saying when a request comes in, uh, open the file, then close the file, then try to turn the file, which we just closed into a readable stream, but it's closed. So we shouldn't, uh, that's not gonna work, which is I think what the error is. And we're gonna send that back as a response, but we've already closed the file. So I think um, the the issue here is this file.close. Um, and in fact, in this case, uh, I, I don't think uh, that we can actually do it this way. Let me, let me just try this. I'm gonna re refresh uh, this. I'll, I'll move the file close below the readable stream. Um, and then I will uh, do this. And I think we have to put this in a separate place uh, later or put this like in a try catch finally uh, kind of block uh, with the response in there. So this is all, all good kind of learning to actually see how this works together. So I've restarted the server here because of my watch mode. And if I switch back to Chrome and I refresh the page, 
uh, we still get back this failed. Uh, so my, my theory is that if I comment this file close out for a second and I re, uh, reset the server here by saving it and then I come back here and I try to refresh the page, um, look at that. So we actually get the, the result, which is what we're looking for. We have this local host here and we get the response here, which is our, uh, our uh, HTML and then the preview for that as a formatted HTML, which is quite nice. Now, uh, the, the, there's one issue here, which is that we're, we're also still sending this uh, back as um, as like a, ch a chunked encoding. So maybe we want to send that uh, back with a different type of content type. Um, but uh, if we come back here, uh, what, what I do want to note is that uh, we still would want to close this file and clean it up. Um, but if I refresh this page, uh, we'll see that that kind of got automatically cleaned up by Dino behind the scenes. Um, but we would still want to manually clean this up by probably putting this in a try catch block um, or a try catch finally block if you've seen those um, and do some cleanup after we're done sending the response so that we actually close the file correctly. And that's an example of where try catch and finally are actually used in practice for things like this where we want to clean up our resources correctly. So we can't close the file until after we send this response and we should be able to do that in, a, in like a finally block, for example. So hopefully uh, that one makes sense. What we'd wanna add here though is something like the um, the the content type. Uh, in this case, you can see that the content type is being sent uh, or transfer encoding is being sent as chunked. If I try this in Insomnia, let me just create another HTTP request here. Uh, I'll do plus there and I'll do a rename. I'll do an EX3 and I'll save that. Uh, I'll just copy this uh, over here just so we can see that and I'll click send. Um, we, we can see that this is basically just sent back as, as text. It's not being formatted nicely um, and uh, that, that because there's no header. So uh, what I'd probably want to do here is let's say like const headers uh, and I'll show you this method is equal to new headers. And then I would say headers uh, dot append uh, or dot set technically in this case, just in case it was already there for whatever reason, I'll show you the lowercase version content type and in this case, this is going to be text slash HTML. And if we were to Google how to uh, content type for HTML, you would see that this is what it is. Um, and we would wanna send that back here. So if I do uh, an object, headers in this case is going to be this object. And this is that short form syntax where it's gonna be headers colon headers, which is gonna be these headers, this header object right here. So if I save that, and I switch back to both Chrome. Let me try this out right, right really quick and I'll refresh that page. I'll take a look at this and we can see that this is back uh, as text HTML now, uh, but it's still formatted correctly. If I go to Insomnia, what I'm hoping is that this preview is actually notices HTML. And if I send this off, um, look at that, we actually get back HTML there because now um, this is the correct content type, which is telling uh, Insomnia in this case that please display this as HTML. Uh, don't try to do any guesswork as to what the content type actually is. So um, hopefully that one makes sense. Uh, that's why uh, headers are important and we should never assume that the client has a, a display uh, application for that. Uh, and it's relying on this to actually use to figure out what to display for the user and the client. Uh, and we shouldn't assume that it has something uh, that can just figure it out for us. We should be the ones to actually tell the client what to do. Um, so if you're interested, I definitely uh, take a look at how you would actually put this in a proper uh, response with the, the finally and, and try catch and all that kind of stuff. There's some demos on that file server that we saw for Dino over here, um, over here, the file server for Dino. So this is an example of how you'd probably want to do that. I think they missed the finally over here somewhere, um, but uh, for the for closing the file, uh, but uh, see if you can figure out how to actually get that working. Um, and uh, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. So I hope you found that video valuable and interesting. If you did, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. As well, uh, I have a Patreon set up if you want to support that way or YouTube memberships or super thanks. Uh, that would be wonderful. Uh, what we're going to do in the next video together is uh, finally uh, start taking this uh, kind of to the next level and we'll start doing things like routing uh, before we actually get into the independent request types like get and put and patch and delete and all that kind of stuff i want to show you a bit of how we'd actually do routing where we can conditionally render and send back different types of content to the user depending on their actual path that they're requesting and the resource that they're requesting if they have one url we can request very uh, we can send back content very differently than if they request a different type of url and we're actually going to be building that using uh, from scratch using a whole bunch of different tools uh, without any libraries as usual. So I can't get uh, wait to get to that video. Uh, I will see you in that one.